Hi, everyone. Hello, beautiful soul, and welcome back to this online summit, Connecting Soul Beings. Today, it is my honor to introduce you to Vince Kramer. Vince is based in the USA, and he's very well known as the mentor of the Awakening Heart. Vince recently came out of the closet, the spiritual closet, I mean. He is also a channel. So we spoke about that as well as spirituality in general. And we spoke about feminine and masculine energies and the impact that has on our lives. So grab yourself a cup of tea or coffee, relax, sit back and enjoy this conversation. So today we are here with Vince Kramer from the US and Vince is a transformation and human potential speaker as well as a conscious channel. Welcome Vince, wonderful to have you here. Thanks Bianca, it's so good to be here with you today. Thank you so much. So share with the world a little bit about Vince. Well, I'm, I'm an interesting combination, like we all are, of a lot of things. I'm a major airline pilot. My wife and I, Mary, uh, are co-founders and co-owners of Imagine Miracles, which is a business to empower and inspire people to get to know themselves at a level where they can live the life that they're desired. Mm. And um, just recently, I had a coming out party as a conscious channel. So I've been <laughs> yeah. channeling for about five years, but uh, we, I was challenged to be authentic. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why we're here today, to talk to everybody about being authentic and making that connection with our soul. And in that challenge, we made a decision to actually bring the, the channeling to our business, really as much to help people see that it's in the connection that we all can make that will really change our lives. And once we change our lives, then we're free to help everybody else transform theirs. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. That's wonderful. So congratulations on coming out. <laughs> oh, thank you. It was, a, it was an interesting situation for Mary. We did it in a, in a group and I started out by, well, I'm going to come out. And then I gave it a, a long pause and everybody was looking at me like, oh, oh, where is this going to go? And then I came out with the channeling and they, they were actually sitting there waiting for something that they, they weren't sure where it was going to come. So it yeah. just, it actually lit up the room because of the, the pause. Yeah, wonderful. So what is a conscious channel? Well, um, the... What I do is is connect with the energies of, of the I am presence. Mm -hmm. So um, in the connection, I, I channel a group very similar to like uh, Esther Hicks channels Abraham. Mm -hmm. And this group is, they call themselves the round table. And okay. it's the ascended masters, the archangels. It's really all the streams of energy of the I am coming together. And then the group that comes through is really focused on the people that are being or are receiving the channeling from me. Mm -hmm. So it's different for me every single time that the group that comes through. Mm -hmm. I'm conscious in that I don't leave my body. I, I actually stay in my body, uh, un, unlike a trance channeling where the individual leaves their body. Um, but I did make an agreement that I was only going to channel for people if I never got in the way in any way, shape, or form. So mm -hmm. they do a really good job of keeping me off to the side, but I'm still there. Fantastic. That's wonderful. Yeah, I, I always call that going off with the fairies. <laughs> yes. And we leave our body. <laughs> yeah, it is a wonderful process. Um, I myself do a bit of channeling in that sense as well. So it's, um, it, it's really hard to describe how that feels, isn't it? It, it is. Um, it's, uh, I will tell you that there have been times that I've felt such a deep expression of love come through mm. me mm. From, from the energies that um, I, I didn't ever want them to leave. The, the, the yeah. love that I felt, the, the tears just rolled out of my eyes because I could feel the love that they had for the individual or the group mm. that they were talking to at the time. 
Yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. It's, um, it's an amazing sensation. And it's a place where it, it's nothing like what you experience as a human being in that sense. And, you know, until you actually do tune into that particular channel. Yes, yes. Yeah. And, and through some of our work, we, we really work with people to help them find their answers yeah. from, from that level that they're, um, let's say, attuned to or they're aligned with. They can find their answers at that level. And then as the heart opens up further, um, one thing that we didn't share is... Uh, I'm kind of known as the uh, mentor for the awakening heart. So oh. in, in our work, um, Mary's kind of the midwife and I'm the mentor for the, for individuals as they open their heart. And as they open their heart more, they can really tune into uh, the energies at a higher frequency and, and get the answers that they're looking for much more clearly. Yes. Yes, exactly. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. So how can we get to that stage? Because I know a lot of people that are actually in the audience um, are curious about this and some may have already experienced some level of skill set in connecting. Um, so how do we start and what do we need to know before we start? Well, the, the interesting thing is I, I look at it from a different angle than a lot a lot of people do. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that I suggest is truly find out where you are right now. Mm -hmm. what's, what's the vibration that's coming from you? So we, we use a five-step process and the, the first process is answering the question, where am I? So mm -hmm. it's really getting to know your belief system and where mm -hmm. your automatic thoughts and the automatic perceptions come from getting to know your ego at a level that you start to understand why you have automatic reactions and what wounds and fears came into you developing those subpersonalities. So once you get to know who you are right now, then we can go through the process of accepting that mm -hmm. and accepting that now we are able to release the what's wrong with me's. Mm -hmm. And when we release what's wrong with me, now we have that opening where we can really help people touch into um, that guidance that's out there for them, be it a, a universal guidance, which God's source, um, uh, you know, your independent or your personal guidance, which would be your higher self or, or your soul. We have all kinds of different names for it. Yeah. Or or even the archangels or even the ascended masters. It's, it's where we are vibrationally to be able to accept the guidance that we bring in. So we use guided meditation. We use active imagination. We even use some one-on-one -on -one techniques in laser coaching mm -hmm. called voice dialogue to, to really bring people to that place where they can start hearing the answers and then the process of, you know, is it really an answer from a source or is it an answer from me and how to go yeah. through that process? Yeah. And that's always the one that people to ask me, how do I know it's me or in the people that I work with, is it my dog or my cat or is it, you know, a different spirit being? So how exactly. do we find out whether it's our voice or someone else's? Well, we, we use several different techniques. Um, first of all, we, we really encourage people when you start to ask that question, that's when you stop getting the answers because now the ego is involved. So mm -hmm. kind of step back from, from asking the questions and the answers coming in because now you're going to have that conflict. And it's when you get the conflict that, that the doubt really starts to come in. But we even use things like muscle testing mm -hmm. initially to, you know, did, did that come from me, my body, or did it not come from me? We, we teach people some techniques in muscle testing. Um, mm -hmm. We also teach um, a couple different ways, and it's, it's a long process, but am I connected right now? And what it feels like 
in in your body, what it feels like in your heart when you're yeah. connected. So I've I've got a meditation that I put together. I, I call it the the violet flame heart meditation, oh, and it's beautiful. really getting to the place where you're bringing your divine feminine, you're bringing your divine masculine in together to create the the violet flame, and then yeah. feel what it feels like in your body. And that is a very similar feeling when you're connected to your higher self or when you're connected to source. Yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Fully understand how that feels. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. how, would, how is that received? Because I'm always really curious because we know in this field that we work in, it's very much driven by females. And you tapped into you know, the feminine energies and the masculine energies. How is that received you being a male and in particular with your background? Um, you know, you wouldn't necessarily put the two and two together, right? <laughs> being very spiritually aligned, you know, with your background as being, you know, in the army and then a pilot. Um, how does that work for you? And what do people usually say? Like, well, it, it's a, it's an interesting everybody's different let's put mm -hmm. it that way first of all i gotta say i was in the air force i can't say i'm in the was in the army oh sorry <laughs> gotta stick with the air force there oh yes um, but but being a college athlete being a military officer um mm -hmm. being a man i i've lived a very successful life in the man world director mm -hmm. level positions um you know i I had it all in the, the old rule set that I was taught by my grandfather mm. and, and some of the rules that I was taught by my father. Um, actually, it's more of a benefit than you would believe. Yeah. Because, you know, there, there is a lot of friction, if you will, a lot of, of mm, give, but not a whole lot of take from the the male population when it comes to a lot of this. And mm -hmm. one of the most important things in, in what I learned and what I've been blessed by, by having my wife, Mary, not only be in the business with me, but be a partner in awakening to who I am and what I have to share with the world. Um, the, the combination of, of a couple coming together and being able to help each other through the process is amazing. So mm -hmm. um, I, I'm big into science uh, and I'm big into spirituality. So when you're bringing science and spirituality together, um, it, it kind of lets the mind latch onto something yeah. and then lets the heart open. So yeah. it's, it's really been great for bringing men into this and, and look at the process of that. Um, I'm six five and weigh 240 pounds, so I'm I'm not somebody that thinks, "Whoa, well, well, that's a, a woo woo guy that uh, <laughs> throws throws fairy dust." Yeah. And so, yeah. just just my presence mm. really mm. helps bring men into the group, and it also gives women hope. Yes, that I'm not going to be on this journey by myself, that mm -hmm. men are awakening, men are mm -hmm. getting these wake up calls, some of them conscious that, you know, it's time for my life to be different. And some of them crisis where they get cancer, or they had an accident, or somebody that's close to them's died. And they really realize, I, I don't want to live my life this way anymore. Mm -hmm. And because I've experienced things very similar to that. And I truly um, I've been called a man's man, so that um, I'm not quite sure what that definition is, but I'll take it because standing in front of people, um, it kind of opens the door. And then when you start talking about bringing your divine masculine and a divine feminine together to be the whole you, yeah. um, it's scary for people. But once they feel a little bit about what that whole you is, Mm. Now the doors, now the doors open. And once it's open, it's not going to close. And we can step back into the darkness for a while. But sooner or later, we're going to step into the unknown. And Mary and I have put programs together and formulas together to help everyone that resonates mm. with us really step into that unknown and feel supported in doing it. Yeah, yeah. And it's actually fascinating, too, because... I have learned from a lot of women that they use more of their masculinity in the work that they do. 
and that that is something that they have grown up with you know and they go to a specific through a specific career and they need to have that masculinity in them to be able to to survive in perhaps a certain type of industry so some women are challenged to tap back into their femininity mm-hmm. and myself i had a bit of a history of that as well because i my background is in corporate finance and that's very very different as well from you know being in the spiritual world <laughs> And people don't often see me as, as woo-woo or fluff. Um, but when I do start talking around that and use all these words, they sometimes go, hang on a minute. <laughs> but it's, um, it's still coming from a masculine point of view sometimes because it's so ingrained. You know, having spent 22 years in that industry, it's, you know, it's a hard, tough, you know, tough industry as well. And I have learned that working with men in this particular industry meaning looking at spirituality and finding yourself and having coaches and mentors that I've actually learned to tap into my femininity more Mm -hmm. by working with men than working with women, Mm -hmm. which I find very fascinating. Yes, for sure. One of the, one of the things that quantum physics talks to us about, and and I don't want to scare anybody away by talking quantum physics, (laughs) but we, we live in an and and both world. We don't live in an either or. It's not good or bad, Mm -hmm. left or right, your Mm -hmm. way or my way. We Mm -hmm. live in an and in both worlds. So we need to operate both in the feminine, in the masculine. And sometimes it's required, as you said, when, Mm -hmm. when you're talking to uh, a, a group of women, sometimes it may be necessary for you to come from the, the masculine side the creative mm-hmm. side the the get things done side the this is the way it is side yeah and, and other times we have to come from the empathetic compassionate mm-hmm. um creation side uh, side of us so it's yeah. it's really learning not to move away from one side or the other it's really learning as as we do in our meditation to bring both the the red of the masculine and the blue of the feminine together to light that violet flame in each of us yeah yeah that's wonderfully said so what is the violet flame because i've i've have tapped into it a couple of times uh, but i can appreciate that some people don't know or have never heard of it well, there's a there's a flame that burns in each one of us, and mm-hmm. we've made we made a decision to come to to this 3D world. Mm-hmm. We chose our parents. We chose where we were going to live. We we even chose some of the initial circumstances that were going to happen to our in our lives, so so we can truly build and discover and fine tune the talents and gifts that we have Mm -hmm. to finally take out into the world when we start living our divine intent or our mission. So the, the violet flame, um, you know, it's just the, the world that I came up in over the last 10 years of, of the violet, but um, it's, it's been shared with me through the round table that the, the, the red of the masculine and the blue of the feminine coming together for the violet is a very powerful combination for all of us. And we, we all hold that flame mm-hmm. that is, is really that connection point for us with the non-physical part of us and, and mm-hmm. the connection point for us for, for the I am presence. And, and that I am presence is the one energy source, God, the matrix, the divine matrix, whatever yeah. you want to call it. We, we all are part of that one energy and that one energy is a part of us. Yeah. And that's, that's the, the flame that burns inside of us. Yeah, beautiful. And it's actually fascinating too, because some people say I have been given or I have received the violet flame. Um, yet, you know, we know that it's already within us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, one, one of the things that is very interesting in, in our world, I'll call it our industry right now, is that we all have a connection to all the knowledge that there is in the universe. Mm. We, we have access to all of it. We have access to divine will. We have access to all the thoughts that have ever been thought. Mm. It, it's there in that energy. Yeah. And 
the, the, the interesting challenge sometimes is when somebody learns something from you, they're really just remembering what they forgot. Mm -hmm. Mm, They're really yeah. tapping into to that part of the knowledge of the universe. And that opens the door for them. And there's so much more to remember. But mm -hmm. they think, well, I already knew that. So it was a waste of my time to, to listen to that talk or, or to go through that program. Mm -hmm. So I challenge everybody to always listen without knowing. If you can yes. come from that place, now you're really going to open the, your heart and open your abilities to, to grab a hold of all that knowledge. And that knowledge is what's going to help you bring your talents and gifts into the world in such a unique combination that no one else has it. And your example and what you're sharing with the world will open the door for others to to share theirs. It's yeah. actually our definition of of miracle. So our company, as I said earlier, is called Imagine Miracle. What what a miracle is to us is an act of love of sharing your special, unique gifts and talents in a way that others can share theirs. Mm. And you can even go to the Bible and look at how a unique talent and gift was shared so others could experience joy or so, or others could truly, you know, give of themselves. Mm -hmm. Wow. So when, when did you first discover actually that you have these skills for a better word? Now, I, I think probably the more interesting thing was uh, I knew at five years old that I was supposed to be teaching people how to love themselves. Wow. Um, I, don't re I don't remember personally my five-year-old time and feeling that, but mm -hmm. my grandmother on her deathbed when I was 17 years old reminded me that that's what the little five-year-old wanted to do, mm -hmm. um, plus fly airplanes. So. So I've got an opportunity to, to follow both of my passions now. Uh, mm. But she reminded me that I wanted to help people love themselves. And, and if they love themselves, they could love others. So mm. it's, it's been a calling. And I've been pulled, no matter how hard I fought, and no matter how big I wanted my bank account, or, or how big a house I wanted, or how many vacations I wanted to take, I've always been missing something. And it, mm -hmm. it took a pretty, it actually it took a series of wake up calls for, for me to get out of this place and, and yeah. down into here and start sharing what I have to share with the world. Yeah, exactly. And that, that's exactly what drives me in particular as well is to get out of here and more into here, mm -hmm. you know, and when you start learning that and practice that, it becomes so easy. And it is something that is quite a big challenge for a lot of people because we always live in our head mm -hmm. every single day. Yeah. And that's amazing. Uh, I want to I go back to that and or both world, though, because we need both. Oh, yes, I agree. Yeah, we, we, we need the information to come in here. And then we need this to to help us create it, help us yes. bring the masculine into the creation of of what it is, the direction we've been sent. So um, I. I just cringed when I hear, you know, get out of your mind and get in your yeah. heart. And um, yeah, it's, it's find your heart. Mm. And then once you find your heart, now how do we make that a, a combination that, that truly plucks the limited, unlimited possibilities out of the universe, make them your probability and materialize into what it is you want and why you're here to live life. Yeah, that's right. Very well said. Absolutely. Is there anything that you would like to leave the audience with today? Listen to your heart. Mm -hmm. Really listen to your heart. It has the answers. And you'll feel those answers. And then please take action on them. Mm. Trust Trust that first initial hit because that hit is the one that's giving you the information that you are supposed to get in that moment. As soon as you start trying to figure out if it's true or it's not true, where did it come from? Now mm -hmm. you, you're going to start 
putting your little twists and turn from your belief system, from your ego on that answer. And now your action may be in a direction that may be just a little off or it may be a lot off of, of the answer that you got for yourself. Mm. Beautiful. That's wonderful. Thank you so much, Vince. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. I love what you're doing in the world and bringing these amazing people together. And more importantly, bringing the, the 3D people together with their soul in that connection. Uh, it will change the world. And I thank mm -hmm. you for doing that. Thank you. You're very welcome. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your beautiful soul to be here and share your wonderful skills and gift. Um, and also your beautiful energy. So thank you so much. Thank you.